Well, and my husband became the governor of Ikita State on the 16th of October 2010. There is no constitutional role for first ladies at the national or state level in my country. Because of my deep commitment and passion for women's rights, I um, of course made it um, very clear that those were the issues I would like to stay focused on. One of the first things I tried to do was to see how we could domesticate the national gender policy in Nikita State. Because Nigeria has a national gender policy and the idea was for the different states in the Federation, the 36 states, to domesticate the policy and use that as a framework to promote the rights of women and girls in their, in, in their respective um, areas. So we managed to do that um, in June of this year in the state and I'm very pleased about that because then that gives us a tool. It gives us a framework to be able to start holding the government accountable and demanding that at the local government level, which is fair to as provincial level in other places, we do have financial resources and human resources made available, available to work on the different issues that the gender policy uh, makes mention of. Another area that I've been very active in is in the area of health particularly uh, primary health care um, services and ensuring that women have access to those services regardless of where they live in the state. Um, it state is a predominantly rural state, so most of the population lives outside of the uh, main cities in um, rural areas where sometimes they have very serious difficulties accessing uh, good quality health care. And sometimes when they have complications uh, with, um, you know, uh, deliveries, for instance, by the time they get to um, um, facilities that have better resources, um, their lives or the lives of their, um, you know, um, babies might have been endangered. So I've been doing a lot of work around that. We have, um, we've had some free medical missions in the state that have been going around providing free healthcare services to. Um, to our citizens and what I made sure of was that those um, free medical missions include targeted services um, to women around antenatal services for example. In June I um, launched a maternal and child health records book uh, for the state which is something that uh, we are all very proud of and this maternal and child health records book would enable the uh, state healthcare providers work with uh, expectant mothers to monitor their pregnancies and monitor the growth and development of, the, of their children and, and there's provision for up to four children um, you know, in terms of the use of that publication and there's also advice and information in the publication on family planning and it's a sort of way of telling people that after four children, hopefully they will have less than four children, but after four children then you know, they know that it's time for them to start thinking very seriously about not having any more. With regards to um, the work on women's empowerment and gender equality, I've been very concerned about the high levels of um, sexual violence against women, particularly young girls. And there was an education summit recently in the state, and one of the resolutions that was passed at the education summit, as part of my intervention, was the need for us to put mechanism, mechanisms in place to protect girls in schools from violence and exploitation both from their peers and from teachers as well, because there are quite a number of cases of teachers sexually exploiting young girls. One of the other things I'm working on in the state right now is getting a bill passed, um, which we're going to be calling the Gender-Based Violence Bill. We are working on that now with uh, the Minister of Women's Affairs, the Federation of Women Lawyers and the foundation I've recently established, which is called the Kitty Development Foundation. We hope to be able to get the bill passed uh, before the last quarter of the year. And the bill is also going to make provision for a monitoring mechanism so that we ensure that not only are we going to have a bill passed, but we also have a way of ensuring that there's adequate follow-up mm. and support for victims of gender-based violence. I think it's absolutely critical that um, as we take on these new challenges um, on the continent in a different country, because of this, all the, because of all the issues that we are taking on and the dimensions that they are taking, it's so important for us to work with young women because of a lot of the issues we are trying to deal with today have serious implications for the lives of young women as young women today and for their lives as the leaders of tomorrow. We cannot afford to make bad decisions on their behalf. We cannot afford to um, have policies and laws in place which can't be implemented to make sure that their lives are better because it's about them, it's about their future. We need more women in the women's movement. 
we need more young women in the women's movement. We need more feminists in the women's movement. And we need them to understand that whatever gains we have today as women, whether it's in the economic sphere or the political sphere, or just in terms of freedom of movement and freedom of association, have come through hard struggles and gains of older women. And they therefore have an obligation to ensure that those gains are consolidated and not dissipated. So it's important for us to create spaces for young women in our organizations and networks. And we can do that through a variety of ways, through mentoring them, through providing them with opportunities for them to develop themselves, develop their self-esteem, to go out to conferences, for them to voice an opinion about things uh, they want to have more information about, and about um, you know working with them on the use of um, modern technologies as a way of building community and building social and political capital. And we can also work with uh, young women by um, allowing them to make mistakes because they don't always have to do the same things that we did or think the same things you know, that we thought. Allow them to do things with them so they do make mistakes. Then we'll be there for them to let them know that we always have their back and you know, we can always work together.